Do you have any general tips on choosing an architecture for your app? And I think I already know your answer because I've been watching your videos. Your approach basically is that there is no one right architecture. Instead, you should use whatever you need at this point in time, which makes sense. But do you have anything to add to this? Do you have any uh, um, preference when it comes to architecture like MVVM, MVI, uh, a clean architecture? Do you have any preferences or how do you approach this? Yeah, well, you, you gave away my punchline, which is fine. Um, so the, the most common question I'm asked, period, is what is the best architecture? Usually they just ask like, is MVVM the best architecture? So um, it's worth spending just a moment explaining why there's no such thing as uh, the best architecture for, for every situation. It's not MVVM, or it might be. It's not MVI, or it might be. It's not MVP, or it might be. Maybe it's MVPVM. Maybe it's Viper architecture. Who knows? So um, I'd like to explain this first using a non-technical analogy, and hopefully the people listening to this understand that there's a reason why I chose this analogy. And there's a reason why the same things you will see in building architecture are observed in uh, software architecture. So let's say we're architects and we are designing an apartment and we have specific requirements. We're designing an apartment for a family with two adults and one child. So we can have some debate about how to design this thing, but it's probably gonna need a bedroom. It's probably gonna need a bathroom Probably two bedrooms would be good for some privacy, if you know what I mean. And then it's going to have a kitchen, probably, and then maybe a living room if it's like upper middle class or something like that. So we have like this general idea of things we're definitely going to need. And like I say, we can have some debates about what's the best situation. Maybe the preferences of the uh, people you're designing it for might come into account. But we're all, we're talking about ways of, sort of setting up the same general thing. Now, if we were to arrive hypothetically at the best architecture for an apartment for two adults and one child, would it make sense to then extrapolate that and say that this is the best architecture for building a car factory? No. So the point of that analogy is to kind of explain to people the project requirements dictates the best architecture for the project. And that can change a lot. To get slightly more technical here, let's talk about two different ways to do MVVM. Because if you thought there was only one way to do MVVM, you're wrong. <laughs> so uh, two different ways. In the first approach, our view model exposes just a data model, like a note, a user, a shopping cart, just raw data, no details about the view which is observing that view model. The benefit of this approach is that it makes your views, or sorry, your view models reusable across a series of different views. There could be some other benefits, but that's kind of the main one is reusability. And that's what most people think of, and that was something that was marketed a lot, I think, by the Android team. Forgive me if I'm wrong as a primary reason why they chose model view, view model architecture. Now, interesting thing that you'll also see in some of their code bases, and this is something I figured out pretty quickly. Another way to do model view, view model, and this is how uh, Martin Fowler approached it in his article. I, I think it was called like presentation model or something. And I think this is sort of where MVVM was originally derived from, but it doesn't really matter. Um, Again, the view is observing the view model. So that's the one common thing you should see in MVVM architecture is the view observing the view model. Um, and the view model may not have a reference to the view. That's, that's common. In the second approach, the view model has a field or a property or some kind of observable thing, a live data thing, for every UI element in that particular view. So in other words, it's still not tightly coupled to that view in terms of like import statements, but in terms of presentation logic, it is tightly coupled to the details of that particular view. So the benefit of this approach 
is that you can basically pull almost all of the presentation logic out of that view, which is going to make it very simple, um, easier to test if you want to test it. And in my opinion, I really hate filling views full of logic, but I understand if you have a really good UI testing setup, then you can do that. So the important thing to understand here is that these two things, reusability and um, knowing about the presentation details of a particular UI screen are to use a fancy word they like to use, orthogonal. They move in different directions. So if I was to say the approach of using reusable view models is the best way to do MVVM, if I say that in a situation where I never need to reuse a view model, and I'm basically choosing that and then filling my views full of presentation logic, I would be using a suboptimal architecture. Conversely, if I use the other approach in a really simple view which barely has any presentation logic to begin with, and I might have another view which really could use that same view model, I'm also not taking using the optimal architecture. So the most important thing to understand is that um, A, there's no such thing as the best architecture for specific situations. And then secondly, the more specialized an architecture is for a certain situation, it'll tend to be or, or specialized for... Uh, when an architecture is really good in some situations, there's almost definitely going to be some situations where it's, it's much worse than a more generalized architecture. Uh, so my current approach, as you kind of mentioned, I don't... So generally, it'll look like MVP VM. But if I have a feature where there's almost zero presentation logic, I'll just leave out the presenter because I don't need it. Um, if I have a feature where I don't need to store anything temporarily to render the view, then I might leave out the view model. So I try to base my architecture... Uh, on the project requirements at hand. And for those listening who might not have that knowledge of when to use what, the honest truth is you just need to try different architectures in different situations, and then you start to get a sense of what works good and what's a new situation. Two things to really focus on for MVVM, like I said, though, is the complexity of the view and reusability, and that can really help you uh, figure out what approach to use. Yeah, and the app I'm building right now, I also try to be a just pragmatic. I uh, started with what I consider MVVM, and then I just add stuff or maybe uh, maybe go more towards clean architecture when I actually need it. So this yeah. is also a benefit of building your own app. You, uh, you don't do this stuff uh, just because the theory tells you to use them. You use the stuff that you that already makes that actually makes sense in this situation because you would want your app to work, and you want to be able to uh, get back at a later time and continue working on this code without getting completely confused. So this is how I approach it at the moment. Um, but I didn't know that view models are actually reused. Do people actually reuse view models? How does this work? You have two screens with the same kind of data. In your first example, where you were, have where you expose just the, the raw data, basically. Well, let's say we had like fragment A and fragment B, and they were both dependent on a specific data model, say like a specific user object. Um, that might be a situation where you would want to have that reusable view model, because then you can potentially share it between fragment A and fragment B. If the view model is tightly coupled to the presentation logic of fragment A, you might not be able to reuse it in fragment B, essentially. Yeah, I think the second approach to me uh, seems to make more sense where you ex where you don't expose the raw types. But I think I myself, I am still using more the first approach where the viewer is maybe doing a little bit too much work. I mean, there's not much logic in my views, but I think I could prepare the data better but yeah it doesn't really matter here this is just my uh, my specific case yeah it, it it is tricky like um what people should understand is that three layers that is a useful generalization that 
should be deviated from pretty quickly. Like if I was to really break down things, it would probably be five layers. And again, not every feature is going to have this. You've got the thing that draws the screen, which is generally the view. You've got how to draw that screen, which is the presentation logic. You've got the data necessary to draw that screen and probably store temporarily, which is kind of what I think of as a view model. Um, you've got the thing that accesses the data. Sometimes that, you know, that's a presenter or a view model. You've got the thing that stores the data, and then you have the logic required to wire all that stuff up, which is what we think of as like dependency injection or service locator. So even in like a moderately complex app, what I usually see is a, a necessary separation of about five, six things. Not always the case. And if I'm in a situation where I don't actually need to pull all of these things out, I might not. It You have to be pragmatic. And I do agree that uh, premature optimization can be a waste of time. But I think if I was to basically explain what are the elements of a GUI architecture that you should really pay attention to. It would be those six things.